During the Renaissance and medieval periods, is that correct? Say it again. It says the legendary emerald tablet is said to hold the secret of the universe. The text became yes. the basis of Western alchemy during the Renaissance and medieval periods. Sir Isaac yeah, Newton uh, practiced we, alchemy. We can talk about the secrets of the universe right here now. I, I, what I study is hermetics from the, the, the genius deity Hermes, uh, as said to have relations with Socrates. Hermes was said to appear in the laboratory of Tesla. Um, da Vinci. Wow. Um, you want to? These are some of the men that studied the Emerald Tablets. Isaac Newton had a Latin transcript of the Emerald Tablets. So did Da Vinci. So did Pythagoras. So did Einstein. So did Galileo. You know what I'm saying? So did Vitruvius. So did Alexander the Great. So did Napoleon. So did Plato. The most brilliant, brilliant minds of our species all studied this stuff. And all the men, 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 men by the name I just mentioned all studied the Emerald Tablets. So, is this all wackadoo, crazy bullshit? Or were all those brilliant men who I just mentioned, were they on to something? I don't believe these men were, 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 were silly men that wasted their time. But whenever they spoke about these kind of concepts like we covered today, like we spoke about today, whenever they went out 
in the public and spoke about this stuff, they were called drunks and they were called senile because it went against it went against what the what the Roman Catholic Church was doing across the globe and it went against everything they said. So when we look at who wrote the tablets, it was written by the Egyptian god Thoth. And I use that term God very, very, very loosely. God is just a, a vocabulary word that people used back then to describe these beings. Or, and these beings, you have to understand, they are, they are ascended beings. They, they are the ascended beings. They are vibrating at such a higher frequency than us that, um, that, that our species feels compelled to call them gods because we have no other word that does them justice. Well, today in 2020, in this day and age, um, you could similarly use the word aliens, right? These are just beings that exist, aliens, gods, deities, whatever, English, whatever vocabulary word you feel comfortable with labeling these beings, they're just beings that are ascended of us. And, and, and so himself was a god, or, I'm sorry, was a, was a king of Atlantis. And back when the flood of Atlantis happened, Thoth was directed to get all of his, quote, writings of magic and all of his literature and art and science. And he was ordered to go on his ship and fly to the land of Kem. Well, back then, ancient Egypt was called the land of Kem, K-H-E-M. When he showed up to the land of Kem, it was known as the land of hairy barbarians. We were cro magnums. These were the Neanderthals that we were taught about in the history books. When he showed up there to ancient Egypt, he rose up the ancient Egyptians from cave people to literal quake cave dwellers and brought them up to pharaohs in a very, very, very short amount of time. And it says in the tablets that there he reigned in ancient Egypt for 50,000 years. You have to understand that the timelines that we've all been told in school are all incorrect. And when I say that those reigned for 50,000 years in ancient Egypt, I mean 50,000 years in the same physical avatar, in the same body. And in the Emerald Tablets, he talks about how he did this. It says something about spiritual technology. Dude, it, 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 we're circling back to meditation. It's all about meditation and the pineal gland. We're talking, this is how powerful this stuff is, the pineal gland. There is a meditation, I can't even believe I'm talking about this stuff out loud. I get goosebumps talking about it. Just know that these are already all these secrets. The Edmo Tablets basically offers secrets of the human being and offers secrets of the human being on a genetic level. So this god or alien or deity was able to stay, quote, immortal because of a certain meditation he would do. And this meditation, he would have to descend down into the pyramids for 10 years. Uh, he would have to repeat this every 40 years. So every 40 years, he'd have to descend down into the halls of Amenti, which were beneath the, the, the Great Pyramid of Egypt, and he would have to do a certain meditation that would have to do with north and south. And he would do it for 10 years. And in doing so, he would prevent his cells from degenerating. Now, as crazy as mind-blowing as that sounds and as hard to believe as that sounds, he offers a similar meditation for us human beings. A meditation that will allow us to access immortality. Now, for people that can't comprehend that or, or can't, or that, that's too over their head, another way of scientifically explaining this immortality effect is that you have to understand that the cells of your body are balanced by a polarity. All right, there's poles, just like this planet is a north and south pole. The cells of the human body have poles. As above, so below. As within, so without. This is like the main quote that sums up alchemy, right? As above, the universe. As below, the earth. As within, the cells, the cellular level. As without, the cosmos, the stars. And so, the only reason why these human avatars even age and deteriorate and aka expire slash die is because the polarity of the cells fall out of balance 
And when the polarity falls out of balance, this is when the cells start deteriorating. Well, Thoth offers a meditation that will allow us to control our energy systems that are within our body that will that will program our cells to prevent the polarity from dropping out. So this makes a lot of sense why they've been trying to suppress it from everybody because like we were talking about with the opiate thing of money and you know how much money goes into uh, medications and cancers and stuff like that. Like it, it really all makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 money, money's the shadow. Money's the shadow card. They want you to think it's about money. They want us to think about about money and control, dude. It's about control. It's about what our species is is, is capable of. If what I'm speaking is truth right now, and again, it's either truth or it's not. I'm either full of shit and I'm completely wrong, and this whole entire show is wrong. And, and but that also means that that that, that Einstein had to be wrong and, and Isaac Newton and Tesla and Da Vinci and Pythagoras and Plato. How weird is it that when Tesla passed away that they went through his uh, lab and said there was nothing in there worth anything that they got rid of it and threw it all away. And you know who yeah. was in charge of that was Donald Trump's great grandfather. Yes, Jonathan Trump. Yeah, Jonathan Trump Oh, and now he took over all of all of all of Tesla's research after he mysteriously died. This four is gonna days. sound crazy. Four days. You wanna know what the last pro you wanna talk crazy? This is gonna be crazy for people that are still listening. Talk about time travel? You gonna throw a little time what? travel in here? Bro, <laughs> Listen to the last, and, and this is all proof. What I'm about to speak, share with you guys right now is absolute proof. You can go on government websites right now and go, go and go and go print out the the actual uh, papers from this experiment. And, the, and now you have to understand they blacked out a lot of this with a black marker, so you couldn't see the details, but you can still make out what our government successfully did. I'm gonna type it in right now. Once you tell me. Uh, it's called it's called the Philadelphia experiment. Yes. <laughs> The Philadelphia Experiment, and our government, working alongside Tesla and using Tesla's research, and let me remind you again that Thoth, aka Hermes, was said to appear in Tesla's laboratory. Well, Tesla, our government, using Tesla's research and his studies, successfully moved an entire Navy battleship, not an apple, not a bottle of water, an entire Navy battleship, a big, huge piece of, of dense matter. Well, using Tesla's technology, they moved this battleship into another dimension and then brought it back to this one. Okay, this is not science fiction. This is the real world. There's a movie on it, I believe. This is the real world. This is the reality of our reality. Our government successfully did this. They moved this battleship into another dimension and brought it back. Okay, well, what dimension is this? What else is possible? What else are we able to do? You know what I'm saying? Because we can't make particles cease to exist. Well, when something goes invisible, it doesn't cease to exist. It just moves. So, like, we can't make particles cease to exist. Even the particles of the past still exist. But all we can do as human beings is influence the vibration of these particles. And so our government, using the, the te uh, Tesla's technology, influenced the vibration of the particles that made up the matter that made up the battleship and they influenced the vibration in such a way that it relocated these particles which made up the ship and it, you know what i'm saying and then moved it in enough to record time and then moved it back to this dimension this is a government project this is 1955 not, you know like, too so like 70 years ago yeah this yes bro this technology's been around. Uh, what they're not telling us is, is crazy, dude. When Joe Rogan has all these guests on his show that used to work at Area 51 and, and, and S4 and talks about, it, 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 it's all cool, it's all fascinating, but it's all just confirming what alchemy has been saying for thousands and thousands of years. You know what I'm saying? UFO, aliens, all this stuff, as crazy and as mind-blowing as these concepts are, it really is explained. It's really not... I mean, it's just as fascinating, don't get me wrong, but it's actually explained, and it actually makes more sense than it doesn't make sense. And it kind of just pushes this reality into a different perception. But, 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 but for people that, 
want to learn more about this reality, they have to study the tablets. You have to go read the Emerald Tablets. And it's written that whoever reads the tablets, you have to read them 100 times. And then when you read them 100 times, something happens to you. And I believe something happens to you on a genetic level, and I believe something happens to you on a conscious level. So I'm in the process of reading it 100 times right now. I'm also handwriting the tablets. It says the experiment was allegedly based on an aspect of some unified field theory, a term coined by Albert Einstein to describe a class of potential theories. Such theories would aim to describe mathematically and uh, physically the interior. Rob, why don't you have a YouTube channel talking about this? Like you and BJ, you know how, what a hit that would be of you guys discussing this stuff? Honestly, this is the first platform I've gone out on public talk about this stuff. Um, I guess part of me is kind of concerned about sharing this knowledge and kind of um, putting it out there. As, uh, but, but then again, that's fear-based. I, I don't want to operate on the fear. So I'm actually in the process of doing this. I'm also I'm not talking to some other friends. Uh, uh, Timbo and Sugar Sean, Sean O'Malley, they, they asked me to come on and, and maybe go on and talk about this stuff. But again, I'm, I'm just... Uh, when you study this stuff, it talks about how it tells you not to talk about it and how how uh, there's a reason for secrecy. It's even and, saying that the people aboard that ship were subject to brainwashing uh, after it happened. Dude, they can go tell people what that happened. They can tell people what that was. It says uh, many suffered from and... mental disorders. Some rematerialized inside out, and uh, others vanished. Like, Dude. it's so interesting. Dude, we're talking about otherworldly shit, right? We're talking about other dimensions, so we can't even explain what all this other stuff is and, and why, what are all these side effects are, right? The, the side effects are beyond us. You know, the fact that another dimension exists is beyond us and how we can access this dimension. The fact that we move a different battleship into that dimension, this kind of opens the floodgate for what else is possible. Well, I would love to start sharing this stuff. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Um, I'm just kind of slowly getting comfortable with sharing this stuff. Yeah. This is, again, this is the first platform where I've gone out to talk about this stuff. Uh, if you can give me a link, I'll post it, and I'll see what kind of response I get. Um, and if it's positive and if people want more information, um, I, I, I guess I can go forward and I'll feel more comfortable sharing more of it. Because we really haven't even scratched the surface. I know we've talked about some pretty heavy concepts here. Um but, but, but we really haven't even scratched the surface. Because you could do stuff. it in subjects, like in, in a timeline. To even everything we talked about, you could be more in depth about it. I find this stuff so interesting. It's some of the most uh, searched stuff on the internet right now. There's a YouTube channel that I love on conspiracy theories with uh, Shane Dawson. I don't know if you know who that is, but um, I'll put that link down below. Rob, for the people listening that are interested, uh, where do you go to get a lot of your information? Is it a, a channel? Is it a, a books? What, what would be something books, interesting for people books, to go get? Books. You, have to, you have to read. People have to read this stuff. And, and, and that's the problem with society these days. And people don't have the time and the patience to read. And, 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 and it's a forgotten art. And I can tell you now that these secret societies, this is one thing that they do behind these closed doors, their little meetings, is they read and they write. Reading and writing has an effect on our genes. Every time you text something with your thumbs on your phone, it's only about eight different movements, 10 different movements um, between the movement of the thumb and the time of the button. When you hand write something, there's 10,000 movements. There's 10,000 like neurological connections every time you write something. So handwriting stuff is a very profound tool and reading is a very profound tool. People just need to read. Get out there, get them by, find, find the Emerald Tablets, read the Emerald Tablets. I also study the Kabbalion. Um, I, I got like seven books out here. I, I just study this stuff nonstop. You can't even read this stuff. You really do have to become a student of it and, and, and just and, and absorb it. And it has to become part of your lifestyle. What's the Kabbalion? What, what is that? Say it again? What, what, what's the Kabbalion? Is that uh, in, in the Indian so the book? The Kabbalion. It's not to get confused with the Kabbalah, but the Kabbalion is basically hermetics. And hermetics, it comes from a different incarnation of Thoth. Thoth was the Egyptian god, um, and, and, the, and, the, and then the Greek version of that same individual is Hermes. And that is where her, hermetics come from. It comes from Hermes. Like people have heard, people have heard when something is like super, super secret, it's called it's called being hermetically sealed. 
Do you believe? Do you believe in uh, ancient aliens? Do you watch that show, Ancient Aliens? Because I feel like a lot of that actually does make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I watch a lot of documentaries and a lot of these conspiracy theory videos just to see what kind of information is out there and just to see how off cue they are. Because there's a lot of stuff out there that's very off cue. Like one thing that kind of drives me, drives me kind of batshit is like, 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 like Rogan's brilliant. I love listening to Rogan. I, I, I watch um, a lot of his episodes when he has certain individuals, you know, scientists and, and quantum theorists and all these brilliant minds that come on. But when he talks about like uh, evolution and how he talks about, he says that we came from primates chimpanzees or uh, that, that we used to be um, in, 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 in uh, uh, back in the day we, we came down on the canopies and then we ate these mushrooms and then, and then our, our consciousness was able to grow and we're able to elevate from primates into human beings my only problem is, is when he speaks about this he speaks about it like it's absolute truth he says no this is the history of our of our species we did come from 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 primates this is and i can tell you right now that's absolutely incorrect theory it's a fascinating theory it's a brilliant theory it's a theory i'll, I'll listen to and i'll hear his explanation but the fact of the matter is it's incorrect we are not we are not descendants from primates a matter of fact it's the other way around primates are an offshoot of the human being See, I like what you're saying there because it, it means a lot. Don't take everything you hear firsthand. Take it with an open mind and then go out and do your own research. Read up on it and see what you take from that information. There's a lot of yes. people that will listen to somebody and, and take it as fact, like you said. Yeah, that, that's what's great about YouTube right now is, is it's really powerful for our species because it's allowing us to communicate. It's allowing us to share knowledge. And again, like for anyone listening to this, I, will, I don't talk about any of this stuff to like boost my own ego or to flex my own knowledge. I know that when a lot of people talk, and, and unfortunately in, in, in the sport of mixed martial arts and a lot of coaches, a lot of coaches will talk to kind of flex their ego. So everything I shared with you here today, I promise you that it came like from my heart. It came from a place of love, and it comes from a place of wanting to share this knowledge with my species, right? And so anyone listening, please know that like, dude, this is all for a place of love. I'm not trying to boast my ego or boast my knowledge. I'm simply using this phone call right now as, as a platform to share this knowledge. And I hope that it's picked up by some individuals because it said that this knowledge, the Emerald Tablets or Hermetics, that, that if you're ready, that this knowledge will find its way to you. Some way, somehow, the universe will corner the way to where this knowledge will become part of your life and it will find its way to you. And with YouTube, it, it, it's pretty cool because it gives us a platform for us to study this kind of stuff. Now, to end this interview, uh, you know, let's talk for five more minutes before I let you go. Because you didn't tell me what you took away from that experience you had in BJ's yard. Uh, what changed that night for you? So... Man, so very, man, this is crazy, man. Cause, so a couple of weeks later, um, I was reading, I was studying the tablets, and it hit me that what I experienced in BJ's backyard that night is exactly what the initiates experienced when they laid down the sarcophagus in the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid was not built as a tomb. The Great Pyramid you can say was like a spiritual oasis they never found any bodies in the pyramids uh, later on later on down the line um yeah the pharaohs used them for tombs but uh, they were not designed to be a tomb it was designed to be a service that certain human beings were allowed to go use now, these are beings that were allowed to go use the service provided for. And when I say service provided, I mean specifically laying down in the sarcophagus. And I can explain to you what happens when they do that. But um, these, be these humans that were allowed to do this were known as ascended masters. Now, some men that, were, that did this, that laid down the sarcophagus, were the men, the men by the name of Napoleon or Alexander or even Moses, wow. and even even the name Jesus. Man, crazy, crazy. Um, 
There's proof of this. There's actual physical proof. The face that people talk about. Uh, Crazy uh, you say that because they say Moses was 500 years old. I just found out. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, this is not, this is not a crazy scene. If, if, if what I'm speaking is truth, and again, it's either, it's either truth or it's not, it's either truth or it's false. If what I'm saying is truth about the whole immortality and about, and about humans being able to prevent cell de degeneration, then it starts understanding how people, human beings living for hundreds and hundreds of years, is it so much more viable and safe? There's, there's, there's Tibetan books right now that are alive that are well over 200 years old. What about that monk that passed away and his body is still intact for like 100 years? You know what I'm talking about, right? He died meditating? Yeah, all the human potential, all this stuff. But the, but the incredible thing is that these books that are over 200 years old, they look 200 years old. They got long white beards that go down their knees and they, they look 200 years old. Now, I don't want to sound crazy with this. You know, there was the whole thing with Pizzagate that was, you know, pretty much proven false. There's the whole, um, well, what's the guy that just died in jail? Uh, everyone's talking about saying that he didn't kill himself or whatever. Oh, Epstein. 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 You know, there's a lot of people out there that say these politicians, you know, they have those uh, secret seances and stuff with young children, that they're, they're, they're pedophiles, this and that. I, I, I looked into a lot of stuff, and there's people that say that they try to get the blood from the children, all, all this stuff, and, uh, and yes. it goes back to um, right here in New Haven with the skull and bones. Uh, it's, it's definitely something really interesting to look into that, uh, you know, there's a lot of signs that can't be proven, but if you connect the dots from this, that, and the other thing, a lot of it starts coming together. This is where the story starts getting darker. Yeah. And, and you're absolutely you're absolutely correct on the whole blood drinking thing and uh, uh, the elites. There's a certain thing that they try to get specifically from this blood, and it's called adrenochrome. Adrenochrome is what they try to get from the blood specifically, and adrenochrome is is harvested from these children, and, and they have to be under the age of nine. And, and, and what they do is they try to spike fear in these children in order to extract the potent adrenaline. And it's like an adrenaline epinephrine from their pineal gland. Again, we're talking about the pineal gland. These are literal chemicals that are secreted from human beings caused by fear. Now, when you're talking about a human being doing something so disturbing and dark as, as drinking the blood of another human, let alone a child, this is very dark stuff we're talking about here. And as dark as it is, the Emerald Tablets talk about oh, wow. where, the, where, where this darkness came from. Okay, and we're talking about rights being said and seances and blood being drinking. These kind of stuff is talked about in the Emerald Tablets, and it has to do with why the Great Flood happened. The, the ancient Atlanteans were a very, very brilliant civilization. They were much more advanced than us. Well, these Atlanteans built these, quote, space warping machines. And these space warping machines did something very, very gnarly. What these space warping machines, you have to understand that this planet, this planet, our, our beloved sacred planet, which is alive, this planet runs in planetary cycles. It runs in seven separate planetary cycles. Each planetary cycle lasts for millions and millions and millions of aeons. One aeon 
is millions and millions and millions of years. And so you can start getting a picture of this this uh, reincarnation experience that we're all experiencing. We've done this dance a few times. It's not our first rodeo. So right now, I believe we are in the fourth planetary cycle. We're in the planetary cycle number four out of seven. Well, what these Atlanteans did back in the days of Atlantis with these space orbiting machines that they constructed is they opened up a portal or a stargate. Not stargate, a portal yeah. Is they opened up a portal to the previous planetary cycle. This is a very, very, very big no-no. This is like a massive woe to our planet now in this cycle. And when this happened, when they opened this up, there was someone that's written about in the tablets known as the Dweller. And the Dweller was kind of like the planetary manager as far as making sure that um, these species that that uh, took up, that, that lived here on our planet many thousands of years ago, that they acted in order. And when the Atlanteans did this and opened up this portal to the last previous planetary cycle, this is when the darkness came through. When they open up this planetary cycle, uh, the, the previous planetary cycle, if there is a hell that exists, that could be described as hell. They're doing that right now, a matter of fact. They have a giant machine that's splitting particles or splitting atoms. It's this, it's this giant machine, and they, they actually say that they believe it's responsible for a lot of these Mandela effects that we see, where time is actually yeah. shifting, changing yeah. time. And yeah, the, 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 the Mandela effect is just particle. It's just particle influ uh, influence. We're influencing the vibration of these particles. Mm -hmm. We can split them. We can measure them. We can now teleport a particle 300 years or 300 miles up to a, a satellite. We're able to do the beam me up, Scotty, now with the particles. But, 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 but that's kind of like a different story. As far as like where this portal came through, this is like where all this darkness and shit came from. Okay. And, and, and the dweller had to shatter that portal. It says he shattered the portal, and then that's why the flood happened. He had to flood Atlantis because of what the Atlanteans did by opening up the previous planetary cycle. Now, much of this darkness was shoved back through that, that portal, but much still survived today. And this darkness can only take material form if, quote, blood is offered and if, the and quote, the rights are said, quote, end quote. Meaning what? This is, what do you say that? This is when we start talking about, like, demonology, all this really crazy satanic stuff. It, it, it really is. It, it, uh, well, you, there's a whole, there's a war going on. Our species is at war. And we've been at war since the days of Atlantis. And, and, and we're not at war amongst ourselves. It's absolutely ridiculous that we're out here bombing each other and killing women and children. And we're going to war against each other over the names of religions. And while, while the whole meantime, there's actual whole war going on right under our noses. And it's not with each other. We're one race. We're the human race. We're the human species. We need to bind together. There's other dark forces that we're at war here. You, you know what I mean? Like, to, fuck, man. To tie this up, I really think this is one of the reasons I love mixed martial arts. is because we're learning that somebody right here in Connecticut, somebody out in Arizona, somebody over in China, we are a lot more similar than we ever thought we were. We... We, we, when we get punched in the face, it hurts just the same. We have a lot more in common than we ever thought. And I think mixed martial arts is actually opening eyes for a lot of people to see. doesn't matter what color you are. doesn't matter where you're from. We really are all in the same. That, 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 that's what I love about the sport of mixed martial arts. Is it's a platform to pursue human potential. Now, Rob, l let me ask you this one last thing before I let you go. Um, what are your plans for this year when it does come to fighting? Um, knowledge, man, knowledge. You're just going to be training? The we have. And even the fact that right now that, that we're talking about this stuff, and that maybe maybe some listeners that have never heard the Emerald Tablets, maybe they'll go read the Emerald Tablets and maybe we'll get, you know, a little bit more knowledge spread. But that is the best way to arm ourselves as a species is knowledge. We have to learn about this stuff and we have to communicate it to one another. And we have to start waking each other up. 
And I believe that there is a slow movement of this growth, and and, and that's what helps with 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 uh, podcasts and, and interviews and, and radio shows and YouTube is it allows us human beings, it allows this species of ours to connect with one another and to communicate to one another. And there's tremendous tremendous power with that. This this thing that you, you you brought up before, you said you're actually writing something. Is that something you're going to publish or release? Yes. Or? Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm just handwriting the Emerald Tablets. Okay. I'm handwriting them because yeah, I just want to have my own copy in case something ever happens. I always want to have a copy here to give to my to my kids and my, my loved ones. Did, you know what I mean? Did they? Because when we were talking about it, it says that there are 15 Emerald em, Emerald Tablets. Yes. There's 15 tablets, but our species is only allowed the knowledge of the first 13 tablets. So it, it says that the knowledge written on the last two tablets is too profound for our species right now. Our level of consciousness as a species is not ready for that level of knowledge. To end this off, how do you sum everything that we spoke uh, about? How, how do you sum this up with a, with a nice bow tie for our, for our listeners? Man. If you guys go follow my, my social media on Instagram, I send it ask. I have it posted up right under my name up there. It comes down to human potential. What are we capable of as human beings? And what these entities have came down here and told us, and what Thoth and Hermes have been trying to tell us, he's being, and in the Emerald Tablets is all written, he's saying, dude, humans, wake up. You human beings are incredibly beyond comprehension. He's saying that we are like stars wrapped in skin. That every human being is just like its own solar system. It's like a central sun with a solar system rotating around it. And Hermes became so fascinated with our species that he traded in his great right in order to serve our species. So Thos slash Hermes slash Mercury is kind of like our species unsung hero. He's kind of like a superhero for our species when it comes to like de delivering this knowledge. So. My things about human potential, I want our species to, and everyone I know and all my loved ones and my teammates and everyone I come into contact with, I want them to just realize what they're capable of. This world has too many hurt, broken, sick people, and we need more healers. We need more love. This world needs more light. And uh, that, that, that's where all my energy and effort comes from. Rob, this literally is one of my favorite episodes I, I've ever done. And I'm really excited to look into a lot of the stuff that we discussed. I really would love for you to continue down this path and maybe have a YouTube channel. So uh, where can everybody find you on social media? I know that you said your Instagram. You're also on Facebook, correct? Where can people uh, give you a follow? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I need to get my Twitter up activating and I barely use But Instagram is my main thing right now. So, again, it's ascended underscore athlete. And, uh, yeah, uh, man. I just post a lot of stuff on there. I'm, I'm, I'm just now recently getting comfortable with sharing this knowledge. So, man, me and you will have a talk. We can talk every week if you want. There's I would love doing here. something like that. That would be a lot of fun. Man, let's, let's do it. Let's set, up another, uh, let's set up another call here soon, and we'll get more information out to the people, and we'll see how well they, how well they uh, receive it. I love that. I, I'm starting podcasts with, with all the uh, Ultimate Fighter vets. You know, I got one with James McSweeney. We're going to have Rob calling in. This is, uh, I, I love it, man. And these are the most important conversations, I feel. So, Rob, have, have a blessed night. Tell BJ, Jason, all those guys over there, uh, God bless, and uh, I'll talk to you soon, Rob. Heck yeah, enjoy it. Nice talking to you. All right, God bless. All right, thank you, Rob. How about that? One of my favorite podcasts we've done here at Pure Blue May. And I got all these rats running around. It is the year of the rat, just to let you guys know. I was in the middle of putting this cage together. And uh, Rob started texting me, and he was ready to do the show. And I told him yesterday, you know, the last couple times he's come on the podcast, we've talked about a lot of spiritual stuff. And then when we start talking about fighting. And I said, this time I really want to stick with, I didn't even say conspiracy theories. I said, I want to talk about uh, just be real, just about some real life shit about I didn't even say about the third eye or anything like that. Like me, every time me and Rob talk, it's always on a different level. And I think it's important to surround yourself with people that don't just see it uh, black and white, that actually um, look into some of these things. And, and, and like me and Rob said before, don't just take it for what Joe says. Don't just take it for what Rob says or what I say. Look into it yourself. Have an open mind. Don't shut down. Uh, one of the one of my favorite things that he was discussing here on today's show was about that flight with Admiral Byrd. 
I'm going to look into that now. And I think if Rob's going to be calling in every week, I think that's a good place to start. The whole talk about the Emerald, to, I was it's so crazy that he brought that up because I was just watching something on that on uh, YouTube or maybe it was Ancient Aliens. But uh, I find it so fascinating, man. And I'm not saying I believe in all of it, but I am saying my mind is open and I find it very fascinating because when you take all of these different subjects, all these different topics, they start tying into one another. And it's crazy. Another thing I brought up earlier in the podcast was uh, how Trump's grandfather took in all of the documents. I have rats running ev everywhere right now of Tesla saying that all of it was worthless. He had nothing of importance and none of the documents were ever found. Now, there is a crazy video that's up on YouTube by Shane Dawson. Uh, also, uh, Kendall Ray has an amazing, that's the video I'll, I'll share with you guys down below here in the description. It's going to sound crazy to you. Donald Trump, time traveler. Now, oh man, I, I want to talk about this with Rob and react to this. Um, but let me give you guys a little peekaboo through the, the window of it. Like I was saying with Tesla, there is a book that was written in the 1900s. Oh, there was the recorder. There's a book that's written in the early 1900s. And in that book is a little boy named Baron Trump. How do you know that name? Oh, gee. Maybe because it's the name of Donald Trump's son, youngest son. And there's a lot of people, especially when he won the presidential election, saying, oh, look at him up there. He has Tourette's, he has Asperger's. Well, okay, it's, this is going to sound crazy. In the story of Baron Trump. It talks about Baron Trump in New York on the fifth block or something like that. And to this day, the area that they're talking about in that book is where the Trump Towers are now. It's so, it's just so crazy. What I'm saying, I, I got to go back and look into it. It just makes so much sense and it sounds so crazy, but it's so interesting. I'm going to share that link down below. Let me know what you guys think about all this. Let me know what you guys would like Rob to talk about on the next episode because we're going to start a conspiracy show apparently i don't even think that's the right name for it because it's not a conspiracy it's more of just having an open mind and the information that's out there just carrying it out have an open mind and the life is not just clocking in nine to five coming home putting on the simpsons or seinfeld waking up drinking your coffee going out taking medicine and i find all this just so fascinating rats are fighting all right guys i gotta check out my mind is going a million miles an hour right now we got fights going on tonight i'll get all that information up for you guys at purelonmay.com we have some new articles up as well so man i'm excited for this let me know what you guys think on twitter at evil under dash echo that's evil underscore ecco also at pure evil mma underscore on twitter and on instagram and for our facebook page at pure evil mma z lowercase z and that does it for this episode. Remember, without evil, there's no purity. White knuckles to the end. Behave yourselves.